I got involved with a company, a film post-production company that had the first computer for sound editing. Uh, and I worked in the mailroom and uh, dropped a few words like digital and uh, random access. And they, that turned some heads and said, you know about this? And I said, well, in school, I heard, you know. This is the sound I've just made. And this is what it looks like. That first job on this new computer in 1982 was a huge moment for me. Getting involved with the coolest, what I thought at the time, the coolest thing on the planet, which was this computer and sound. On the script, that'll give me an idea of what we're up against and how complicated the project's gonna be what sounds are gonna be needed to be recorded. It might be a period piece, it might take place in a unique part of the world. So I'll need to think about getting new, fresh sounds whenever possible. Fortunately, not happen as much as we would like, but it does happen and when it does, it's magical that the, the composer and myself can, can communicate and, and, and support each other. And it's really special when that happens. And it did on Hugo with another Berkeley alumni, Howard Shore. Uh, it was an amazing experience with Howard's beautiful music and, and my association with sound with that. It was really a great time, you know, great. Each director in each film was different and Martin Scorsese is a fascinating guy to work for and uh, he's, he's very generous in, in giving suggestions and, and accepting feedback on you know, the sounds that eventually develop into his movie and it's been great, great opportunity. Hugo, Philip yeah. Stockton, and Eugene Gerti. That was one of those special projects that you once in a lifetime get that um, everything sort of comes together, the period and the, the needed, the sounds that are needed, and again, Howard's music being so beautiful. Based on the repeat business, there is a sort of, you know, spreading out of that that, oh, he worked on this, or the sound of that movie sounded good, or Ang Lee's movies are always interesting sounding. Let's, you know, consider those guys for the job. Um, so it's a combination of that repeat business, creating more business by exposure. It's, it's the hardest part of our job in recording sound is getting clean recordings. Mm -hmm. And even when you want traffic as the recording, getting that ideal, you know, without plastic bags of somebody walking by when in fact, you know, the traffic you need is of a certain period. You'll pick various sounds from the better recordings and then create your traffic, you know, create your cityscape from, from various things. What you can't get ideally in one take, you know, you create, that becomes the sound design. Berkeley, for me, was the place where all the cats went, you know, Al Demiola and, you know, and, and everybody. So it was like a natural, as a guitar player, you know, it was a natural progression to want to go there. And the influences of the school had on the creative process of everything was about creativity. So the fact that I didn't pursue a musical career with my instrument was, to me, less important than, than pursuing a, um, a sound career in film based on creativity. I wasn't specifically interested in the engineering or the technical aspect. It was the designing and creating of sound and, and stuff. And that definitely, definitely is right directly to, to Berkeley and the people I met and the teachers I had here. <laughs>